Good morning, Coffee Break Reflection. Pastor Jerry Scott here. It's June 1st. I hope you had a good Memorial Day. Let's talk about God's patience this morning. Have you ever wondered if God could possibly love you because of some terrible, regrettable choice you've made in the past? Ever wondered if God could care about you because of the kind of person you've become? People ask me a lot, how could a good and loving God send people to hell? Both of those ideas, that God couldn't possibly love me because of some awful thing I've done, or that God is terrible and vengeful and desires to send people to an eternal destruction, miss his heart by a mile. I was reading in the writings of the prophet Hosea this morning, great encouragement there. Hosea, in case you don't know, was a preacher in ancient Israel who had married a woman who left him for other lovers. Her choices caused her to fall far and fast, and she became a street prostitute unloved without hope. True story. Hosea went and found her on a slave auction and bought her back, brought her home, loved her back to life. Hosea's choice was a living lesson, as we read in his little book, about God's patient and enduring love for his people who had chased after other gods. Yes, God loves us that much, just like Hosea loved his wayward wife. When we wander, when we chase other loves, when we abandon him, he will not give up on us. I'm so thankful for that. Hosea speaks with the voice of God in another illustration of the depth of the love of, Je- uh, love of God and the length of his patience. In the 11th chapter of Hosea's book, we read, And when Israel was a child, I loved him as a son. I called him out of Egypt, but the more I called to him, the more he rebelled, offering sacrifices to the images of Baal and burning incense to idols. I was the one who taught Israel how to walk. I led him along by the hand, but he doesn't know or even care that it was I who cared for him. I led Israel along with ropes of kindness and love. I lifted the yoke of slavery from his neck. I stooped to feed him. But since my people refuse to return to me, they will go back to Egypt and they will be forced to serve Assyria. War will swirl through their cities. Their enemies will crash through their gates and destroy them, trapping them in their own evil plans. For my people are determined to desert me. They call me the Most High, but they don't honor me. Oh, how can I give up on you, Israel? How can I let you go? My heart is torn within me. My compassion overflows. No, I will not punish you as much as my burning anger tells me to. I will not completely destroy Israel, for I am God and not a mere mortal. I am the Holy One who lives among you, and I will not come to destroy. What a, what a picture this morning of the heart of God. What a tender picture. God shows himself as a father whose heart is broken by a rebel son who has demonstrated nothing but contempt and disregard. But he points out that he loves his people and he helps them and he feeds them and he cares for them. Oh, their response? They love other gods. They reject him. Does he hate them? He does not. He feels anger, of course. He feels sorrow in his knowledge that the consequences of the rebellion is nothing good for them. But, and I quote, his compassion overflows. This is the heart of our God. Are you concerned that you've gone too far to come home, that you've exhausted the patience of God, that you've tested the limits of his love? That's a deception of the enemy of your soul. That is not the voice of God. That is not the truth of God. Hosea's God is our God. He stands ready to meet our prayer for forgiveness with restoration in abundance. He's given us the choice of life or destruction, not his choice, our choice. Oh, he says, the wages of sin is death. We earn our own spiritual destruction by our choice to reject him. But the rest of that line goes this way. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, Romans chapter 6. He gives us as a gift what is beyond our reach to ever purchase for ourselves, life. God's amazing grace is a consistent theme of the Bible. Yes, of course, he's a just God. He's a holy God. He's even a jealous God. He cannot ignore when we are willful. He will not excuse our behavior like 
a mother who cannot admit the folly of her beloved son. The world he created for you and for me, the world in which we live, has laws of harvest that promise, and I quote, God cannot be mocked. A person will reap what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature will from that nature reap destruction, but the one who sows to please the Spirit will from the Holy Spirit reap eternal life. Galatians chapter 6. My friend, the cross of Christ stands before us offering love and forgiveness for any who will turn to him. Hear the invitation of a patient God today. In the word from the word, found from Isaiah chapter 55, here's God's invitation. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked one forsake his way, the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him, to our God, for he will freely pardon. What a wonderful passage. Yes, my friend, the God of Hosea is our God. He loves you today. Lord, we thank you for the amazing grace of Jesus Christ. We thank you that that which we deserve is not what you will give us, but rather you will give us the gift of life if we will but turn to you and love you. Teach us to love you as we ought. Lord, bless us this day and help us to be a blessing to those with whom we live. Lord, guide us and guard us, we pray, and keep us safe in your hand. In the name of Jesus, amen. Friends, thanks for the opportunity of sharing with you this Tuesday morning. I hope it's a hopeful message for you. I hope to see you tomorrow morning. And until then, as always, I remind you, walk with Jesus.